Hello Canada, I'm Janella Massa. British Columbia has revealed its annual overdose report, saying last year was the province's deadliest on record. The response and what's being done about it, that's what we're talking about on Canada tonight. These are sons, brothers, fathers, daughters, sisters, friends and colleagues. Thousands of years of life and potential are gone. I think if those in Ottawa came here to BC, they would have a very different perspective on this crisis. We do need more meaningful change. There needs to be a plan to address this in a meaningful long-term way. That was BC's chief coroner. She says the province's overdose crisis is being made worse by the pandemic, with people increasingly isolated. She says the harms associated with illegal drugs returned with a vengeance. Almost five people died every day in the province last year. To put that into perspective, that's higher than all deaths related to homicides, suicides, and car crashes combined. And it's higher than all the COVID-19 deaths seen in that province last year. Officials say the big culprit remains fentanyl, which entered the drug trade five years ago and has since driven BC's public health emergency. Let's take a closer look at the numbers from today's report. In 2020, more than 1,700 people died of drug overdoses. That's 74% more than the previous year when 984 people died. 69% of those who died last year were between the ages of 30 and 59. 81% of them were men. Well, as one of the possible solutions to the crisis, BC is seeking approval from Ottawa to become the first province in Canada to decriminalize possession of small amounts of illicit drugs. The move towards decriminalization is an important element of British Columbia's response to the overdose crisis. Um, I haven't yet heard back uh, from the health minister, but I look forward to more conversations and, and we'll have more information about timeline once we know um, whether the federal government is going to stack up, step up and take leadership in this area. For more now, I'm joined by Leslie McBain. She's the co-founder of Moms Stop the Harm, a network advocating, advocating for drug policy reform. And we've, we've reached her in Pender Island, B.C. Hi, Leslie. Thanks so much for being with us on Canada tonight. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Let's talk a little bit about the role the pandemic played in these deadly overdoses, uh, which we mentioned a little bit, you know, just before. Uh, but talk to me about how this has exacerbated the issue. Well, there's several ways that it it has uh, made everything worse. And one was mentioned there that people who normally or, or would usually uh, take advantage of safe consumption sites and other harm reduction methods, such as always using with someone else, uh, having naloxone, naloxone on hand, um, calling 911. So 911 mm -hmm. could be called if, if there was a problem. All of those sort of were reduced during the pandemic because of the the rules and the fear around being with others. Uh, some people who would use those some of those um, resources just didn't go to the overdose prevention sites or the safe consumption sites. So that was one, that is one factor. Mm -hmm. uh, another factor is certainly the drugs have become more toxic and more lethal with border clo closures and so a, a change in I guess in the manufacturing of these illicit substances they became they became more toxic more lethal stronger and people weren't aware hmm. and what measures have already been taken to address some of these issues frankly not very many uh, that last, I think it was in March or it could have been April, just that the sort of when the pandemic was was beginning to rage, our BC government uh, implemented what they called uh, safe supply risk mitigation during COVID. Unfortunately, I mean, it was a good step. It was a good mm. progressive step, but it was not fulsome enough. It did not have enough infrastructure uh, behind it. Uh, many people couldn't couldn't find it, couldn't uh, use the resource, and there was a bit of stumbling on what substances were offered. Uh, so that was a good try, but it didn't, it didn't really stick. And uh, a few people have certainly taken advantage of it. Some people have, uh, but not as many as we hoped. Right. And I would 
say that is probably the only measure the government has taken during COVID. So I'm sure you'd like to see more of that. Now, I want to ask, you know, you have a personal connection because of your son, Jordan, and, and I'd like for you to share a little bit with our viewers, maybe what, maybe help people understand, because I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about who drug users are. Definitely there are, and um, without insulting anyone, media is, is partly responsible for that. Um, you know, the media pictures, uh, and the photographs that, that people often see are the mar most marginalized, mm. the most vulnerable people in our society, the people who don't have homes, the people who are forced to use drugs, in, you know, if they're addicted, forced to use drugs in, in alleys and in, in, you know, public places. Right. The reality of it is most overdose deaths happen either at home or at, you know, inside. And you know, we've never looked at the um, sort of the socioeconomic strata of that, but I, well, others have, I haven't. Right. It's across the board. It, you could be, um, you know, living in a one bedroom apartment and making minimum wage, or you could be living in a beautiful home in a, in an upscale neighborhood with a loving family around you and all, mm. all combinations of that. So there is no one type of person. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's um, it. Drug use usually uh, an addiction. First, excuse me. <clears throat> D drug use usually become it is a primarily a way to mitigate pain, and that pain might be physical. It might be emotional. It might be a mental health issue. Uh, it could be racism, poverty. There's mm. there's all kinds of reasons people try to feel better, and often people then that drug use turns into an addiction. Right. So there's, um, it's a complicated uh, disorder and it's, there's no one, one way to look at it. Right, I understand in, in the case of your son, it was, it was painkillers. Um, so as oh, you say, yeah. there are many different uh, types of ways that, that um, people are using and, and abusing drugs. Um, you know, the grim statistics that we've seen today have, have renewed the, the calls for decriminalization uh, of drugs in BC. We know Ottawa uh, has committed to starting that conversation. Is that, do you think, the answer or at least part of it? First of all, it isn't, I'll just correct you on one point, there, it isn't actually de decriminalization of drugs. It's decriminalization of people who possess a small amount of drugs for their own personal mm. use. That, that's what decriminalization is. It is a step we absolutely need to take. Uh, it needs to be implemented uh, here in, on the West Coast, um, as the police often tell me that it's sort of a de facto decriminalization. They're not arresting people or charging people for possession of small amounts. However, uh, decriminalization, good and progressive as it is, will not stop the deaths. The only thing that will stop, stop the deaths is a, is a clean, regulated, safe supply of drugs that are easily and legally accessible to those who are addicted. And, and you make a good point about that, uh, making that distinction between uh, uh, decriminalization and we're talking about simple possession as opposed to uh, trafficking of drugs. So you talked about the, the safe supply before we run out of time. Um, just how bad do you see this getting as we move into 2021? We've seen the numbers for 2020. Do you expect that it's only going to get worse? It's certainly not going to get better. Uh, whether it's going to get worse it depends on what the government will implement quickly. Um, it could get worse. Uh, there's no reason why it wouldn't get worse if nothing is done. Um, we're in a situation, we've never been in this situation before, so it's only conjecture. But I do know this, if, if we aren't given, or if we aren't giving people what they need to stay alive, then we're failing. So we need to give that safe supply we need we do need to decriminalize people for their for possession we need to support people who use drugs so that they can have a chance at recovery if that's what they choose leslie mcbain is the co-founder of moms stop the harm she joins us from bc tonight thanks so much for being with us leslie you're welcome thanks for asking